Have I ever talked about why I don't like review scores? Honestly, I don't remember. Make a sufficient number of these videos and you're bound to start repeating yourself eventually. But anyway, I don't like review scores. They provide an easy way out. You don't have to try and explain to people why the visuals are bad or why the plot is poorly written. You just slap a number on it and let people decide by themselves if it's worth their time or not. I can see why people like that approach, but to me that's just boring. Lazy, mostly. After all, I'm kind of wasting my time listening to your opinion and not watching numbers, but also boring. Unwieldy as well, because sometimes you'll get stuff like Radiant and you look at it and are like, how the fuck am I supposed to score this? Now, Radiant is a 21 episode anime made by Lerche, based on a French manga series written by Tony Valenti. Yes, they make manga styled things there. They're pretty much the bastion of European based comics, all things considered. Some things just never change. Our story goes kinda like this. In a world that looks suspiciously like the one from Ruby, only with flying islands, a giant eggs of unknown origin bombard the surface of our planet, and weird things come out of them, which are known as the Nemesis. By the way, come to think of it, outside of Wakfu, nearly all French fantasy works I've been reading recently had flying islands. But anyway, Nemesis are dangerous because outside of being bigger than a human, they can also utilize the local mana called Fantasia, which means that this cute little thing also shoots massive laser beams. People who are touched by a Nemesis grow some magic cancer and become sorcerers that are hated because xenophobia, but since uh, they're the only ones that can touch the nemesis, they are kinda, sorta, but not really tolerated. Our lead is Seth, a spunky young teenager with a heart of gold that looks uh, like the bastard child of Grey Full Buster and any black haired shonen protagonist since 2001. After learning some important lessons about the world, Seth sets course to level himself up and eventually reach the fabled planet of Radiant and enact the first ever recorded planet side. And so the usual things for shonen commence that are so common you can practice practically sing them out as a lullaby. New friends, weird people, home base, weird events, balls, battle, and end phase. If you've watched any long-running shonen, be it any of the big three or any newer ones, you'll quickly find yourself familiar with both its setting and overall actions. In fact, a lot of this series reminds me of Fairy Tale, only with a lot more hatred towards mages, which in itself is ultimately not a bad thing as long as it entertains, and for the most part, entertain it does. This is a well-made shonen anime, both structurally and technically. The plot is smooth and knows when to be funny and when to be serious. The visuals are generally typical for the genre, but are detailed and epic during fight scenes. The music is non-invasive and unmemorable, but still nice to listen to. However, for some reason I couldn't watch more than three to four episodes in a row without subconsciously starting to do my paperwork or turning it off and forgetting to come back to it for a few days or so. Thankfully, the show has very neat recaps before every episode, so you never get too lost in the plot. Although sometimes it gets slightly absurd, like in the Broom Race episode when they reuse five to ten minutes worth of footage from previous episodes, and I'm not entirely sure whether to be thankful or offended. When gathering some information on it, and by that I mean going on the wiki, of course, uh, one of the reviewers there said something along the lines of, it's not trying to revolutionize the genre, but it pays a great homage. And honestly, I couldn't have said it better if I tried. It's by far not the worst anime I've ever seen, quite the opposite in fact, as when I was watching it, I was at least entertained, but either because of my burnout or just because the anime is so average, it might run the world record in the department in which I don't want to return to it, nor do I really have any specific memories about it outside of it was nice, predominantly because it was formulaic enough to go into that part of your brain where everything average ends, yet not formulaic enough to just be lost there. If you've watched all of Toriko, fairy tale, and similar anime and want your fix, then this anime was literally made for you. To the rest of you, this is just a good but average fairy tale fan fiction. Might grow on you, but you'll more than likely be bored. But if it does grow on you, great. But go see your doctor because that's probably unhealthy. Mm.